good evening everyone. Okay, it's been a long time since I had my last class ya. Dah lama saya tidak bersiaran sebab saya uh, memang busy ya uh, dengan uh, urusan SPM. Jadi sekarang ada masa untuk saya berikan siaran. Okay, so there's a time for me to actually give a little bit of pointers to help my uh, our, our everybody lah, alright? All the students who are taking your SPM out there. So good luck to you. Stay calm and uh, just do your revision the best that you can, okay? Just remember, I've got a few pointers for you at the end of the lesson. So I hope that uh, you will be able to uh, get a little bit of pointers and pay attention to some of the topics that I am going to let you know. All right, which are the topics that you must not skip during your revision. Okay, so I'm going to share screen now. All right, I hope you can see this. All right, today's topic is I'm just picking up one important topic, which I feel that a lot of students will not be able to answer because it is quite a challenging topic, okay? Satu topik yang agak mencabar, and uh, it is quite a new thing, right? Compared to, let's say, the syllabus of last 20 years, or 10 or 20 years ago. Okay, so, ini adalah berkenaan kejuteraan genetik, or we call genetic engineering. So, I've chosen a few questions. Uh, it's not the entire question, because the soalan essay ini adalah gabungan beberapa topik. So, it's not entire question on genetic engineering. It's just a combination of a few topics. Usually the biotechnology, genetic engineering, and also uh, this, what you call the inheritance, the warisan. So I have chosen a few questions. So let's look at the first one. Okay. Uh, let me see who's watching here. I think uh, there's a comment here. All right. One minute. Yeah. Okay. Kenneth. Yeah. Hello. Uh, it's been a long time. Okay. Thank you for watching. So I hope that you'll be able to get some pointers from here. All right. So let's start now. Okay, uh, this is an actual question. Okay, actual question of, uh, I wouldn't tell you which year, but it did come out. Actual SPM question. So the diagram below shows some steps in genetic engineering te technique to produce transgenic pseudomonas species, which is one of the GMO, or we call genetically modified organisms, that can synthesize, this produce an enzyme called benzyl succinate synthase, BSS. BSS is used to treat oil spills in the ocean. Okay, so in the last one, in the last now, sometimes you do not get, don't need to get uh, takut yeah, or worried when you do not know what all these terms are all about. Like benzyl succinate, macam tak pernah belajar, okay? Tak mengapa, tapi konsepnya anda pernah belajar. You have learned that you can modify certain organisms using the technique of genetic engineering to perform certain things for you. Okay, so this is the diagram that is given to you. You have a bacteria, a chromosomal bacteria or the the chromosome from bacteria, all right? And then you remove the plasmid, okay? After that, you find that you do something to the plasmid, then you put them back into the bacteria, and then you, you see the number increases, so actually you're cloning the bacteria, okay? So you see here, I pay attention to all these things. This is actually the plasmid. Plasmid is the circular DNA from the bacteria. So you pick it out, okay? And then you uh, actually splice or put in the code, now the gene, that can synthesize this enzyme that you call BSS, benzyl succinate synthase. After that, you put it back into the bacteria and then you allow the bacteria to multiply. So you're doing something to the bacteria to increase the number because you want to produce this enzyme in huge quantity. Okay, menghasilkan enzyme in dalam quantity yang banyak. Jadi, uh, apakah tekniknya? Okay, what you have to... The question is 8 marks. Okay, soalan ni 8 markah. Jadi, apa yang anda perlu... Uh, tulis untuk menghuraikan. Jadi sebenarnya, anda dapat lihat uh, the steps are already more or less inside here. So, di manakah anda dapat jawapan? Anda pernah belajar ini. You have learned this before. Okay, so refer to your textbook, page 283. Okay, tengok balik ya. Eh? So, in your textbook, there is one page here on page 283, which actually sums up what your genetic engineering should be about. Which actually removing a segment of the gene which is uh, includes uh, your dna from an organism that can function okay daripada satu organisma yang mempunyai gene yang boleh melakukan benda yang anda lakukan yang nak anda lakukan you remove it okay dikeluarkan lepas itu anda sambungkan ke dalam plasmid bacteria now why do we use plasmid why do we use bacteria Okay, the reason is because bacteria can multiply very fast. Okay, the good thing is bacterial uh, multi, uh, this uh, cell division 
you get one round of uh, the next generation, which means uh, the next the anak, la, right, the offspring, is in as little time as 20 minutes. So every 20 minutes, you get a new generation. So imagine the number grows exponentially. Dari pada satu hingga jadi dua, dua dari empat, empat jadi lapan, lapan jadi enam belas. So the number keeps on increasing double, double, double every single cycle. So at the end of it, in a very short time, you will whatever we do, we make use of the bacteria to multiply it for us. Okay, so first of all, we must find the gene that can produce the enzyme. So ini, soalan ini adalah penggunaan uh, contoh daripada textbook ialah melalui penggunaan atau penghasilan insulin. Tapi konsepnya sama. It's the same concept with producing a bacteria that can break down oil. Okay, all you need to do is you repeat the steps here, but of course you change the word lah, it's not insulin anymore. You take the, the gene that is able to produce this enzyme called BSS. Okay, so apakah uh, jawapan, right, to get your eight marks. All right, can okay, so you refer to your two eight, uh, page 283 later and uh, read it up. Okay, so first of all, okay, so the question is describe the genetic engineering technique in producing transgenic pseudomonas to treat all spills on the surface of the ocean. So, huraikan technique kejuruan genetic. So, when you talk about technique kejuruan, kejuruan genetic, you have to take out the gene and insert into the plasmid of the bacteria. And then you allow this bacteria to multiply. Okay, so first of all, all right, piece satu, right, first point is you take out the plasmid from the pseudomonas. Okay, the plasmid from pseudomonas is removed and cut. You see the round ring here? This is the ring here. This is actually the circular DNA from the bacteria. Okay, bacteria has circular DNA. And then you cut the gene, all right, take out a, a, a segment of the gene from the DNA of the bacteria. All right, and then you use the enzyme called restriction enzyme. Even by mentioning the number, name of the enzyme, you will get your mark. Okay, using restriction enzyme to cut. Actually, you don't cut using scissors. You can't cut it using scissors because it is too small. Okay, the molecule of DNA is huge, as minute. So you have to use an enzyme to remove. Okay, we call it uh to cut lah. Right, in other words, cut in inverted commas, and then. The gene that you want, you must get it from somewhere else, the source, and then you insert the gene into the plasmid. Okay, so you can see this. This is the example using insulin. Okay, of course, you don't use the word insulin here. Insulin, you ambit daripada uh, sumber lah. Okay, the sumber here is the human uh, pancreatic cell. So, and then you put it into the uh, cut plasmid. And then you use the enzyme to join it back together. Enzyme yang anda gunakan untuk menggabungkan semula dipanggil DNA ligase. Okay, so the DNA ligase is to join it back. The uh, restriction enzyme is to cut. Okay, remember, restriction enzyme to cut, remove. The segment, you use the DNA ligase enzyme. Alright, okay, have we finished? And then, what you have done now, this thing is called a recombinant plasmid. Recombinant means it does not uh, contain the original DNA. You have already manipulated, you have added something inside. So it's called a recombinant. Okay, at that point, we call the word recombinant DNA or recombinant plastic. Make sure you use these words. If you talk about other things but you don't use these words, you are not going to get a lot of marks for your essay. Okay, so make sure you remember the terms. So you see this word here? Recombinant plastic. Okay, then after that, you put this plasmid back into the bacteria. Okay, first you took it out to put your gene inside. Then you got to put it back into the bacteria. Masukkan balik ke dalam pseudomonas into the bacteria there. Okay, after that you allow, you give the best condition, you're going to breed your bacteria. Okay, okay also the transgenic, now your bacteria is known as a transgenic bacteria. Means it's no longer the original DNA. Okay, the organism is called transgenic organism. So now it's diperbanyakkan or dibiakkan ataupun diklonkan. You let them multiply. Okay? Then you're going to have a lot of it. So now each one of these bacteria will have the ability to produce the BSS enzyme. Okay?
to produce a lot of the enzyme in a short amount of time. Okay, that is the advantage of using bacteria. So this transgenic bacteria is spread to the sea surface. So P1 to P8 is actually talking about the technique of producing this bacteria, which has the ability to produce the DSS. Tapi, anda perlu nyatakan juga bagaimana anda mengolahkan. How are you going to use it to clean up your oil spill? Okay, so the other part is you have to talk about what you're going to do with this bacteria now. Apa yang anda nak buat dengan bacteria yang ada ke, uh, ke, uh, apa, ke, kelebihan ini? The, the ability to produce the enzyme. You're going to spread it to the sea surface. After that, what is going to happen? Your bacteria will break down the oil. Okay, degrade or break down atau menguraikan minyak ataupun hydrocarbon. Because as you know, uh, majority of the oil molecules here is actually hydrocarbon, long chains of carbon. Okay, and then whatever that is produced after the breakdown, it is can be used as a source of energy. Okay, so this is a, the process. So P1 to P8, you can talk about the technique, all right? And then 9 to 11, you talk about what you're going to do, how you're going to solve the problem of the oil spill, all right? Okay, yeah, throw into the sea, okay, yeah. Basically, yes, but of course, you're going to put, you know, what, what happens in the, what kind of process, uh, what kind of uh, reaction is going to be? It's going to be a breakdown, hydrolyze the oil, okay, break down the oil. All right, okay, Alan G, oh, yes, it's, uh, yeah, okay, I know you. <laughs> okay, all right, so... Uh, eight marks, make sure you have both parts. If you talk about uh, only one to eight, you are not going to get your full marks because you miss out that part on how to uh, how to how to put this bacteria into the, the, the seed. All right, okay. So let's go to the second question. This is also a part of the question which has the genetic engineering. Okay, so you see all this question, right? I see all these diagrams. It is going to help you. Even though you tak tahu, Caranya ataupun secara detail, tapi by dari pada gambar aja, it more or less it will remember you. You will you will recall back what you have learned. You see the DNA is put inside the human gene, put into the goat DNA. All right, use all that, and then you see this is an embryo. Okay, what's the question first? Hemophilia is an inherited disease caused by lack of blood clotting factors. Okay, so hemophiliacs are those students are people who are not able to produce the protein to clot the blood. Okay, jadi uh, pembekuan darah ada masalah ya. Dia kurang kelebihan untuk pem, uh, kurang apa kebolehan untuk uh, membekukan darah. So the hemophiliacs will experience excessive bleeding that can be fatal. Jadi boleh membawa maut. So the diagram below shows how hemophilia can be create, uh, treated by applying genetic engineering. Based on the diagram, pay attention to the word based on the diagram. Whenever you see, uh, you're going to see your question paper, a lot of the things will be based on the diagram. So when it's based on the diagram, look at the diagram again. You must answer according to what is given in the diagram. Okay, you must answer according to the specific example for the diagram. Explain how GE, that means genetic engineering, can treat hemophilia. So this is a part of the question only. This is a part C only. Okay, BM. All right, penyakit pewarisan hemophilia disebabkan oleh kekurangan faktor pembekuan darah. Okay, I think the rest of the week you can read. Okay, kalau I'm going too fast, you can play the video again. So that you can look at it in detail. So uh, today's lesson will not be very, very long because I know you need to study. I'm sure you have been studying for the past few days. You need more time to study. I will keep the lesson today short, okay? So that you will have more time to study and it won't tire you out. So terangkan bagaimana kejuruteraan genetik boleh merawat hemophilia. Okay, so based on this diagram, okay? I will show you the diagram again in the next slide. Okay, so where is your answer? Okay, don't think, oh, oh I, will not, I have not studied this before. Teacher didn't teach me. Actually, it's all in your textbook. Your textbook is a very good textbook. Okay, look at page 280. It is there. The concept is there. Okay? Nampak dalam muka surat 280 ada lembu, ada kambing. Okay, so if you are very blur blur on this, the next thing to do is after this lesson, please go and read your textbook. Please go and dig up your notes on genetic engineering. Okay, if you already do not know. So here you see the concept of producing the uh, that has got this uh, blood clotting factor is the same as the one with the cow. The cow is on the right hand side, uh, left hand side, producing milk which does not have beta lactoglobulin. Uh, this one is another question I'm going to show you afterwards. So I've got two questions that are related to this. Okay, ada dua soalan saya sudah sentuh di sini tentang penghasilan susu yang ada kelebihan ada ada perbezaan daripada susu biasa. 
Okay, yeah? Now, where is your answer? So, first of all, again, same concept. Same concept with the insulin and all that. You have to take out the gene from the human DNA because this is the gene that has the ability to clot blood. So, you got to take out the gene, right? This is your source. You want to put this into the DNA of the goat, okay? Because you want the goat uh, to, to, to become able to produce your blood clotting factor. So, you masukkan, digabungkan ke dalam DNA kambing using this one lah. All right, using your your restriction enzyme, you cut away that segment. After that, you add in using your DNA like this. Now, why I don't put here your restriction restriction enzyme in your DNA like this? Because this is only three marks. Sebab hanya tiga marka. Kalau tiga marka, anda tulis terlalu panjang. The whole concept lah sudah uh, apa yang perlu sebut anda tak sebut. Tapi anda berikan terlalu banyak detail. So, depends on how many marks. Just now the one on eight marks, you can talk about restriction enzyme, you can talk about the DNA ligase, all this mesti ada marka. Tapi di sini, nampak sana tiga marka saja. Jadi, anda tak perlulah sebut dengan restriction enzyme, DNA ligase, nak sebut pun boleh. Okay, you have, you can write if you want to, but you may not have time to finish off the entire story. Because the entire story is how do you produce that good? Okay, belum habis lagi. You produce your DNA recombinant. Okay, recombinant DNA. After that, this recombinant DNA is micro-injected into the fertilized egg. You can see this diagram? This is actually the egg, okay? The egg of the goat. And then you insert the DNA inside. So this is called micro-injection, which is a very, very tiny needle. You inject the DNA into the telur. The telur yang telah tersenyawa. So you're going to produce an embryo, which will have the ability to produce this blood clotting factor. Okay, understand? So now you have come to this stage. Belum habis lah, sorry lah, because the diagram shows until you produce the goat. So you have to continue with the goat, okay? Lanjutkan lagi. So after that, this uh, uh, embryo, I'm uh, sorry, this ovum is already fertilized. It is going to grow to become an embryo. And later on, going to be the goat. Okay, so this embryo is a, called a transgenic because it has a different combination of DNA already. You already add something into the DNA. All right, so now you see, now you're going to implant this egg, this fertilized ovum, right, or we call it an embryo, back into the uh, into the uterus of the kambing. All right, you've got to implant it, implantation, penempelan. You see, I also don't put here because too many points already. Only three marks. Only three marks, you cannot be talking about the entire page on three marks. Okay, you're wasting too much time. You talk about yang penting sahaja. Okay, lepas itu nampak. Lahirlah eh, yang kambing ini. So, this kambing ini adalah kambing yang telah uh, reproduce from the embryo just now. So, blood clotting factor. Sekarang, uh, this, this, this goat now have the ability to produce the blood clotting factor. Okay, in the susu. So, now you take the goat's milk, alright, and then you extract the blood clotting factor. And now you will have your susu or your blood clotting factor that is can be given to hemophiliacs. Okay, concept is the same. You always include your gene into the DNA of the organism. Okay. Yeah, milk that helps with disease babies. Uh, not to say disease babies. Babies with uh, this one, uh, yeah, the, the not able to clot blood. Yeah, hemophiliacs. Yeah, repeated, correct. Lonely, Lilith, correct. You need to know the basic concept. You see, uh, when a question comes, uh, it may not be always this one. It may be something that you have not heard before, you have not seen before. It's something new in the research. But you don't get tired, you don't get tak, tak payah takut. No need to be scared. The concept is the same. You must use the recombinant DNA, you use the restriction enzyme, the thing. Repeat the same thing. You must know how to apply into the question. Uh, okay, just correct, lonely lilies, right? Restriction enzyme is the scissors. Yes, correct. Basically, restriction enzyme is to cut away the segment. And then you want to put in your new segment, you have to join it together. When you join together, you use the DNA ligase enzyme. Okay, it's the glue lah. Yeah, correctly. Yeah, very good. Okay, good concept. So you apply it, jangan takut. You tak pernah dengar apa enzyme, tak pernah dengar apa penyakit pun tak, jangan takut. Benda itu sama saja. They are testing whether you understand the concept and able to answer for the question. If you can do that, that means you are, wow, special. You are very, very up there, okay? You are high-class senior student, okay? You must know the skill. 
Okay, so here three months only tak payah berjela-jela panjang. Nanti you tak ada masa untuk bahagian lain. Don't worry. Three months, you just make sure you have at least six points to write about. Enough. You sudah come. Stuck here. Okay, the PowerPoint is stuck. Don't worry, ya. Ah. Just a little bit. Ah, just wait for a while. Okay, right. Biotechnology. So this is a little bit of not so much and genetic engineering, but it's actually genetic engineering is part of biotechnology also. It's a field which utilizes technology to manipulate organisms, mola organism, to produce biological products. Explain the importance of biotechnology in DNA profiling. So that means you only talk about these three, ah. Jangan pergi cakap benda lain, benda lain, ah. Producing insect tolerant plants. That means these plants cannot, will not be easily destroyed by certain insects because they're tahan, tahan penyakit. Okay? They are very resistant to this attack by the insect. And then, of course, the same thing again now, the bacteria, producing bacteria to clean oil spills. So this is one question, one part of it, also using the genetic engineering. But this one do not need to tell you, do not need to explain the process. They want you to talk about the kepentingan. Ah, okay, kepentingan, eight marks. Where is your marks coming from? Again, textbook. You have learned it before. Ah, this question will come up. Ah. I do not know. I didn't, I didn't, uh, what do you call that? Uh, I did not Google the question. But it's always better to be prepared. Because I know a lot of students are very blur blur about concept of genetic engineering. It's like so high tech. So high tech, right? So it's not easy to understand. But once you grasp the important thing, you can apply to any of the questions. Just like Lonnie Lilith said. Basically, it's the same thing again. Okay, you need to take out that part. You're going to put in that part using what enzyme and then you multiply it. That's all. Finish. Okay, now, Amy, this is where your application of DNA profiling. Okay, this is in your textbook. I've taken out the textbook. This is your production of plant that is inside, uh, re, uh, we call it uh, resistant to inside, okay? BT, so we call it, uh, what are BT corn, all right? And then this one, production of this uh, bacteria, one of the example is uh, Alcani borax bocumensis, that's the name of the bacteria, that can use to soak up or clean up or break down the oil spill. Okay, so now, you have three parts there. Jadi, markan yang lapan. Then make sure you have at least about two, 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 and the any two marks will come from anywhere. As long as you have two marks each, okay? Jangan tertinggal mana-mana bahagian. Okay, so D1. Okay, this is for the DNA one. The advantages of DNA. Now, why we need DNA tests and so on? To determine the identity of criminals. Okay, you have a lot of crime out there. Huh? People get killed, right? And then you have blood stain everywhere. So you take that blood stain. You take out your DNA and you, you, you do a DNA test and then you got your suspect. Suspect about you. Tak tahu yang mana pembunuhnya. Ambil lah DNA dia daripada darah, whatever. And you do a match. Okay? So, next one to identify genetic diseases. Also can. Okay? To find out penyakit genetic. To settle paternity and maternity disputes. Okay? Perbalahan tentang who is the father of this child. Okay? Both father claim that this is the child. Okay? The mother not sure who. Right? So you can use DNA test, right? Then to determine the suitability of organ donor and recipient. Menguji keserasian. That means sesuai ke tidak organ ini di uh, derma kepada <coughs> patient ataupun uh, penerima organ. Kalau tidak, dia akan reject. The tissue, we have a sample we call of tissue rejection. Jadi, uh, the surgery will be a failure. Then you waste a lot of time. Again, the person will go through all the unnecessary stress of going through the surgery. You can test first, okay, using that. Ah, Tevesh, good evening. All right. The DNL, yes, for crime stuff. Not only for crime, so you see there's a few more things that you can do with DNA test. Okay, then for the second one is production of the insect-resistant plants. Okay, why we want to produce this kind of plant? Because if you have these plants that are resistant to insect, you do not need to use pesticide. As you know, pesticide, racun prosa, they can find their way into the food chain. Okay, it will sit into the ground. It will be absorbed by the plant, and so happen if you eat that plant, it will get into your system. So, akan membawa mudarat kepada food chain ataupun rantai makanan. So, we prefer not to use pesticide if possible. So, this plant will be healthy, will not be attacked by insect. Okay, increases crop yield. Jadi, kalau uh, the plant is not attacked by insect, that means it will have more production. 
okay, the food should be baked, it will not be eaten up by the insects and so on. Okay, does not pollute the environment because you are not using any pesticide or any ration for rosa. All right, okay, so these are things you can, this is logical. These are the things that you can remember. You can think on your, you know what you've learned before, okay, not using chemical is always a good thing. Remember that, okay. Next, uh, so this is all this, lah. all right, this is the uh, next one. We haven't finished yet. So the next one is on uh, the T4, reducing the cost of maintenance for these plants if they are not easily attacked by plants. Therefore, is lesser cost uh, because when you want to produce, you want to use pesticide, all this, you have to buy the ration, it will be more expensive. So it's cost effective. Mengurangkan cost penyelenggaraan atau pen, uh, tanaman, okay? Then, now for the B, B for the oil spill bacteria. Why, uh, what's the advantage of using bacteria to, to clean, clean up oil spill? Because the bacteria are able to multiply to eat. You can manipulate that. You can make the bacteria as many as you can. All right. And then because of the number of bacteria is a lot, so you're going to produce a lot of those enzymes, whatever, okay, that you can break down the, the oil. So able to reduce oil water pollution because if you can break down the oil, that means the water will be clean. Okay, you mengurangkan pencemaran air, and it is an environmentally friendly method of bioremediation. Okay, instead of using other methods, then it is uh, using this bacteria is more, uh, we call it environmentally friendly. Okay, okay, so at least uh, you want to have three parts there, you must have at least uh, one of each, and then the rest can come from anywhere. So the total will be eight. Okay, make sure you try to divide. Lah. Lebih kurang dua, 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 lepas tu, you buat lah tiga, tiga, tiga. At least three, three, three. Think of as many points as possible. Three, three, three. You got any more, just put it inside. Campak dalam saja. Okay, you campak dalam. Pakai tak pakai tak mengapa. The examiner will choose for you. Kalau kena, kena lah. Alright, kalau tak kena skema, tak apa. It is tidak menjejaskan your skema. Whatever, you just throw inside. Alright, if you have the time lah. Alright. A graph, Okay. Teacher, graph have draw biology, right? Okay, depends on the question now. Usually, graph, I do not think it will be more uh, so much on the paper two because you have already gone through the paper three. Paper three is drawing graph and so on. So, happened, the graph didn't come up this year, lah, right? So, paper two, um, not really very, very, I cannot think of any question that we drawing graph. But make sure if you do draw graph, apply what you have learned for paper three. It will be the same. All right, using the correct scale, draw the X there, join all the dots. Kalau dia bukan straight line, jangan pakai ruler. Okay, must smooth curve and everything. Okay, let's go on to the next question. Question four, four marks only. The rapid increase in world population has put a greater demand on food supply. Okay, so based on your knowledge of cell division, ah, this one, you must use the concept of cell division. Okay, let me write down here. Explain the technique that can be used to produce meat in a short period of time. Ah, so now we have actually it has happened uh, in UK and you know, all that they have they are actually uh, methods to produce uh what you call meat that is not coming from the actual animal. Okay, and uh it is able to be done because we are doing using the concept of cell division, we have this technique of culturing, uh, culturing technique on kutoran, it can produce very fast. Okay? We don't have to kill the animal. Right? So, pertambahan penduduk. Okay, so terangkan teknik yang boleh digunakan. Now, remember the word teknik. Ah. Okay, so the answer. Alright, now. You're going to choose answering like culturing technique, meat culture, tissue culture. Alright? Now, I'm sure some of you want to say, can I put the answer cloning? Okay, cloning. Is cloning a method? All right, most of you may be definitely use it. Oh, I think of the first thing you think about is cloning. All right, now cloning uh, is not correct. Cloning atau pengklonan is tidak betul because cloning or pengklonan is not a technique. Dia bukan satu cara untuk menjalankan proses itu. Cloning is a concept. It's a concept of reproducing from one cell. You multiply, 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 multiply. That is called cloning. Okay, and you use the indo uni. You do not have, uh, we call it uh, fertilization. There is no sexual reproduction there. Cloning is you have one indo and you take the cell from there and then you repeat, repeat, you multiply, multiply, multiply. That is called cloning. That is a concept. Tapi macam mana nak menggunakan? Macam mana nak menjalankan? 
That is called the technique. So the technique has to be this kind of culturing technique, meat culture or tissue culture. So pokoknya, perkataan culture must be other. Culture must be that. So I give you an example. I'm sure you take your, you learn your chemistry, right? Now, for example, neutralization. Ataupun penutralan. Penutralan bukan teknik tau. Okay, penutralan is a concept. It's a concept where you have your acid and your alkali. When you add them together, it becomes neutral. Correct not? That is called neutralization. Itu bukan teknik. Okay, itu adalah satu proses. Itu adalah satu concept. Alright. Now, how do you carry out your neutralization? Bagaimana anda nak menjalankan penutralan? Anyone can answer me. What is the technique you use for neutralization? So, neutralization is not the technique. Ah, can anyone? Any one of these, Alan Jade, Loni, Lily, Tevesh, anyone that I can see here, who else is here? Only the three of you responded here, so I can call another one of you. Anyone, what is the technique? Your chemistry coming up huh? after your bio, huh? okay? You must know. You must know your chemistry. Yeah, anyone? I give you a first letter, T. It starts with T. Nobody knows. Nobody remembers. Alamak. Ah, this is a equation saja. Lily. Is acid plus alkali, you get water and salt. Yes, it's a equation. Ah, okay, Nisa, Nisa. Bagus, Nisa. Uh, tapi perkataan ejaan tu silap sikit. Penitratan. Titration. Yes, correct. The technique is tit titration. Where you put your acid into the burette and you put your alkali into the conical flask and then you open the, 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 the tap, the valve there and then you drip in. Slowly until it reaches the end point. Betul tak? Ah, so that is the technique. Jadi, jangan ter, what we call it, uh, keliru tentang teknik dan proses. The process or the concept is cloning or neutralization. But how do you carry out? You got to do a certain method. So for neutralization, is titration. For cloning, you got to do this technique, pengkulturan. Understand? Okay, so we want this answer. Pengkulturan. That is your F. Okay, dah satu markah, lagi tiga markah nak buat macam mana? Nak tanya, nak, nak tulis apa? Okay, so you say stem cells. Nak pakai apa cell? Okay, you must pick certain cell because your 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 things come from that cell. This is your all the raw material. You must see the 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 source is the stem cell, not any cell, ah, because not all cells have the same ability to uh we call it be cloned. Only stem cells can be cloned. Okay, so stem cells are taken from the animal. Okay, lepas tu. What you do is, you are going to culture them in specific environment. You must be in a sterilized culture medium. You give them the, really, they put your, what they call the, all the uh, nutrients that is needed, all the hormone, growth hormone, and the correct temperature. You got to put it in the incubator, okay? Put it in the laboratories. And then they will multiply very quickly. And then the stem cells will divide by mitosis. Apa yang di underline, tolong jangan lupa nak tulis. Okay? If you say just divide, you, I'm not sure you get your marks or not. You must say the chara, which is the process of cell division by mitosis. Because if you say cell division, it also includes meiosis. Okay? So you must say mitosis. For cloning, it's definitely mitosis. And then it will produce the muscle fibers. Okay? And then you eat the muscle fiber. And then, so you only have uh, four marks here, so F plus three. Okay, F must must be other F. F is your nama technique, and then any three points related to the technique. Okay, clear, right? Okay, let me see. Got any questions now? Okay, question five. Okay, so Mary Stam, Mary Stam, M E yeah, Mary Stam, E B up. Okay, L B G I B. Okay, Mary Stam, M E yeah, Mary Stamatic tissue. Yes, that's the called the stem tissue. Okay, last question. Okay, last question because, like I said, concept is the same. So, once you understand, you just do more of the questions. Look at the answer. Sekarang, kalau today and tomorrow, I give you a tip, huh? <coughs> you will not have time to go through so many things, so many chapters, kan? You have 28 chapters, kan? You cannot be going through every chapter now. That one you should have done months ago. So, now, the today and tomorrow and Monday morning, all right, what you can do is you cover certain topics that you know you should cover. You take the question. Kalau tak tahu, ba tak tahu jawapan tak apa, baca jawapan. Take the question, read the question, read the answer. Read the question, read the answer. More or less, you will know what you should say, okay, when the question comes up. Okay, so last question. 
Diagram below shows the difference between two types of food grown. Okay, so look at the two types. Huh? So you have one big strawberry and have a small strawberry. Okay, let me switch on the, uh, sorry, yeah, the, the charger. Okay, so you have big and small. The organic one is normally small, but GMO because you have already done something to it. Okay, you have manipulated it. So it will be bigger, fruitier, a bigger, juicier, and sweeter, all the best things that you want in a food. Discuss the advantages and the disadvantages of genetically modified food, GMF to humans. Okay, what is the advantage or the disadvantages? Five marks. So try to have six, three, three, lah. at least three advantages, three disadvantages. Okay, where are your marks coming from? Where are your facts coming from? It is from page two, eight. Okay, so it's a good textbook. Don't say, eh, hey, I tak pernah belajar. Ada, ada kan. Jadi kamu tak, jangan lupa sahaja. Go and refer to 281. Your facts are there. Advantages of GMF here. Alright, these advantages of GMF. Okay, so I will put it out in the note form here. Okay, point one. Advantages. Alright, overcome food. Overcome strawberry. I put strawberry because we are, kita menjurus kepada menjawab soalan itu. Kalau soalan tu tulis tomato, ah balik ya. Kalau picture tu tomato, okay, si tomato lah. Kalau the app, uh, the the picture give you apple, ni masih apple lah, okay. So try not to be so general. Try to be specific for the question. So overcoming strawberry supply problems. That means not enough strawberry all over the world, okay. So because GMO or GMF, they have ability to grow faster, they have ability to become bigger, right? So they overcome the food supply, food shortage. Reduce the price. It'll be cheaper. All right. If you can produce uh, genetically modified food, nah, even though it, it, it's in the beginning, it'll be difficult, lah, right? Because you have to go through so many research. But once you get it already, you can multiply the thing. You can use back the same breed. And then it becomes very cost effective because ada banyak, hasilnya banyak. Okay. You can produce a lot of it. So it dapat mengurangkan harga, cost makanan. Increase the quality of course of bigger size. Sweeter, nutrient content, maksudnya kandungan gula tinggi, mungkin dia masak cepat, okay? Everything is good about it. Nah, just think of all the good things that you want in a fruit. Everything that is good in a fruit, okay? Increase the quantity, bilangan akan bertambah. Jadi, quality ber uh, bertambah, quantity maksudnya bilangan. You get more per hectare of the farmland. You get don't know how many kilograms of it, okay? More. And... Because they are stronger breed, okay? Because you made them to be stronger, they do not get killed uh, by this insect. They kurang dirosakkan oleh insect. So, mengurangkan penggunaan racun perosak, okay? Or racun serangga. So, better for the environment, actually, because you're not using all these chemicals. Okay, improves the economy of the country because you have better uh, penghasilan, right? You got more money, or you, you sell it, or you become more expensive because you got bigger fruit, lah. So, it also can improve the economy of the country. Lah. Dapat pening, meningkatkan uh, pendapatan uh, petani and so on. Okay, same point. Okay, that is the advantages. Now, disadvantages. Alright. So, natural species is endangered or threatened. Now, kalau kita biarkan, we always keep on tanam this strawberry yang besar-besar, yang juicy-juicy, yang kita sudah olahkan. It's not natural. This is not the natural bit. Apa nak jadi kepada, what's going to happen to the one that's original, yang kecil-kecil punya, small-small one, not sweet, not sour, uh, sour, not sweet, sour, all this. The original breed, dia tak akan dapat bersaing dengan GMO yang ini. The GMO with better quality. The original one uh, will not be able to compete. So in the end, probably they will become extinct because nobody wants to plant this anymore. Okay, because it is... Uh, of course, uh, not good lah, right? We're not, it's so small, it's not sweet, nobody who wants. So your natural species will be endangered at one time, maybe another 10, 20, 30, 40 years later, you might not even get the natural one already. You get all these big, big ones that you have genetically modified. Okay? The possibility of gene transfer from GMO to humans. So when you eat that fruit, okay, there is a possibility lah. So we're not saying that it's, it will happen. There's a possibility of whatever gene that you have incorporated into your new uh, strawberry or whatever, when you consume it, it may find its way into the gene of your humans, okay? Then, apa akibatnya, kita belum tahu lagi lah. Because we, it might take a long number of years for us to see the effect. Okay, kemungkinan sahaja. So, we call this kemungkinan. So, human health may be affected. There are some people who do not want to uh, take GMO food because maybe they are very health conscious. 
or maybe they have uh, that they, they want to very natural kind of living lah. They do not want all this uh, human intervention. They don't want to. They want. They prefer to farm their own food. They eat natural things and all that because they may believe that all these things were not good for are not good for the health. Okay, so break all these things. Okay, these are things that we have among all lah. Sometimes it may not be good for us. We do not know yet. Okay, we need time to see the effect. And that may trigger allergic reaction. Sometimes the allergic reaction could be there. Okay, because of uh, the the this this kind of uh, not natural. Ya kita sudah olah kan, okay? And also the and that that this gene may be because it's so strong, it may be antibiotic resistant. Okay, so when you eat this strawberry that has got this special gene or that, this uh in case next time you are you you need to take antibiotic right to kill off any bacteria, it may become not uh we call it not sensitive to antibiotic already. Okay, you are not able to kill off that bacteria so on because your gene. Have become your this this whatever has you have taken up, they become antibiotic resistant. Okay, so these are some of the points that you can write in, and of course, producing GMF uh, gives rise to ethical issues. Are there issue issue ethical ethical? Are they on kata tak 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 sepatutnya? This should not happen because it's like naturally God gives us all these things. Uh, why are you playing like God? You know, some people say you play like you 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 are you macam Tuhan. You nak menentukan macam ni macam ni. So, so a lot of people they are against this. They do not like to eat, you know, food that is genetically modified. So sometimes he talks about, you know, about ethical issues, ah, issue issue moral dan sebagainya. Okay, so this is uh at least one A and one B lah. So you sort of less more or less like three three like that lah. Okay, to get full marks, you don't talk about A sahaja, don't talk about B sahaja. Mesti ada campuran dua dua. Okay, I think it's the last question now. One more question on this one. Ah. A type of cow, okay? This is actually a question that I've got from uh, one of the states. But I've changed the question. Because I find that the question for the state, that, that one of the questions is, dia beri terlalu by information. Okay? So, we always remember what is given in the question. You jangan repeat di dalam soalan, ya. You, uh, dalam jawapan. Don't repeat what is already given. Because when you repeat what is already given, that means what you write there, you're not going to get any marks. Okay, because it's already given in the question. Like if they give you the name of the enzyme, you write again. This enzyme is known as blah, 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 blah. Okay, you're only wasting your time. So make sure that before you write, anda mesti baca betul-betul. Dalam soalan itu, apa yang tak ada? Yang anda tahu. Kalau anda tahu, anda tulis di dalam. Okay, barulah dalam skema itu mungkin ada benda yang, uh, yang kita nak mark itu. Okay, so this diagram shows a cow. Never say what name of the cow has been developed using a genetic engineering uh, technique to produce milk without a certain protein. Uh, protein itu tidak diberi nama. That is known to cause allergy. Uh, alahan. Alah means allergic lah. Di kalangan bayi. Okay? So never say the protein. If you know, please write. Uh, actually, you know. You have learned it before. After I show you where. Now, tengok. Uh, cow ni sangat healthy kan? Okay? Very healthy. Now, what is this? Bahagian lah. Okay, this part is the one that produces the what? The milk lah kan? You see all the baby milk, they will suckle through that. Now, what is the name of that thing? <laughs> Human, you say breast, right? Correct not? You say breast lah. Okay, produce the milk lah, right? But in cow, you don't say breast, you know? Do you know what you call that? Anyone? Iman, Delila, Delila, Loni Lilith, Yap, Nisa, Elenji, the Devesh. Ah, uh, what, what is the the name of this part in English? If you can, in BM pun boleh, tapi BM tak tak patah tak pasti sangat ni. Eh, anyone, just give me one few minutes. Ah, very good, Lily. Very good. It's called the other. Ah, uh, so if you do not know, now you learn a new word. This is called other. Okay, other is that macam breast lah untuk human we call breast, but in cow we don't say breast lah, we call it other. Kilang susu dia. Okay, very good. Now, suggest a technique in genetic engineering to produce allergy-free milk. So, you must name the technique because it says suggest a technique. And then, explain your answer. Okay, so, answer. Five marks ni. So, tak perlu panjang-panjang. You just write what is the uh, main thing, the basic things that you need to know. Okay, textbook. Dari mana jawapan ni datang? Okay, here. Remember the same old thing? Just now, we talk about the goats. All right, the goat that was able to find, uh, to make this blood clotting factor, uh, factor pembekuan darah. So you see on the left-hand side, you have this cow that can produce a milk which does not contain 
beta lactoglobulin. So it's the same concept we just now yang yang kambing itu. Okay, so it's a uh, beta lactoglobulin. It can cause allergy among some infants. Okay, so jawapan using nah si nama nama teknik itu DNA recombinant technology. Okay, menggunakan teknologi recombinant DNA. So satu markah untuk tekniknya sebab dia memang nak markah anak uh, nama ni sebab saya suggest cadangkan beri nama dulu lepas itu explain how okay same concept again like saya Lily fah again again sama juga DNA segment yang ada ke kebolehan menghasilkan the the what they call the milk ah that does not have lacto ah uh, globuli you must pindahkan okay cut out using the restriction enzyme then you in ah uh, Insert into the DNA of the cow using the DNA ligase. Tengoklah maka kalau maka banyak tu tulislah nama enzyme. Kalau maka tak banyak tak payah. Okay. Terus kepada berikan the what they call that the nak tulis pun tak apa. You're not sure what's in the skin. Tulis saja. Okay. So after you join it, you get the recombinant DNA. Alright. The name is called recombinant DNA. And now this what we call the new gene combination produced. Sometimes the P two P three can be the same point. Okay, the recombinant DNA is actually the new gene combination. So what can this do? Okay, so this cow is known as a GMO or we call a transgenic organism. Okay, kalau jawapan itu soalan itu sudah ada transgenic, jangan pakai transgenic. You pakai GMO because same meaning. Kalau soalan sudah ada GMO, anda pakai perkataan transgenic. Okay, this is how you go around the schema. Kalau ada transgenic, you pakai GMO. Kalau soalan tu ada trans, uh, GMO, you tulis transgenic. Okay, you give yourself another chance to get the point. Understand? Right? Then the cow will have the ability to produce milk that does not contain beta lactoglobulin. Ini yang you tambah sendiri. Sebab soalan saya tak tulis ada uh, beta lactoglobulin. Tapi kalau soalan sudah ada, if the question already mentioned this milk does not contain beta lactoglobulin ah tak payah tulis lah you base masa sahaja you base pencil sahaja pencil pen anda okay don't write say what is in the question the C first then it will not cause allergy in infants okay so just now was I think ada tulis ah allergy tidak menghasilkan tengok ah sejak eh uh, soalan tu ah okay this one allergy okay ini tak payah lah kalau dalam jawapan itu Uh, soalan itu sudah ada. So, your P, this one you need to write. Alright. So, whatever it is, you get F plus any form. Okay, clear. Alright, alright. So, by now you should see many of the question tu bolak-balik, bolak-balik pun sama juga kan. It's the same thing. So, jangan takut. You may get a question that will, you're not name or the enzyme, the bacteria pun tak pernah dengar, tak apa. Your concept is still the same. Teacher, we will take the plasmid from DNA cow and gene from the DNA cell. Okay, plasmid is not from cow. Plasmid is from the bacteria. But no, we don't take the plasmid from bacteria. Okay, because this is not using bacteria. This is, we want to make the cow able to produce the milk that doesn't have lacto, uh, beta lactoglobulin. So your DNA that you come from, you take this, you must be this milk, uh, I think it's human, human milk. Uh. Human milk does not have beta lactoglobulin. So the gene itu mesti datang dari sel manusia. Okay, so the source is, apakah sel yang mempunyai gene yang you hendak itu, you cut it out, you put into the animal that you want to mengolah, that you want to treat or you want to change. You take out the source, just like the case for the insulin. Your insulin is human produced insulin, all right. So you take out the pancreas cell from the insulin. You isolate the cell from the pancreas. You take out the segment of DNA. Then you put into the bacteria because you want the bacteria to make the insulin. In this case, not bacteria. You want the cow to produce the milk. So you don't have any bacteria here. You take the gene from the human cell that produces the milk, then you put it into the uh, DNA of the cow. Ah, okay. DNA of the cow no plasmid, okay, because plasmid is only for bacteria. Okay, faham liao. Okay, ah, if you don't understand, you you can uh, telegram me later, no problem. Okay, I give you my 
Telegram, okay? Uh, first you put the A there lah. When you go Telegram, you install your Telegram first. Then you have any question, you please ask me. Okay, I'll be more than happy to answer. Ah, uh, yes, yes. You don't replicate it like insulin because insulin is you make it a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, but this one you just want to make the breed of the cow that can produce the milk that don't have lactoglobulin. You don't need to replicate. Of course, you have to produce the cow. Lah. The cow comes from the embryo. Lah, right? You have to make the embryo. You implant the embryo back into the, 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 the what they call the uterus. Lepas tu, bagilah peluang itu embryo itu berkembang menjadi anak lembu. Okay, lepas itu, barulah uh, you akan dapat anak lembu itu. Okay, alright. Last question. Not last question. Last thing I want to tell you. Okay. Okay, Lily, wait, wait, what? Ah? Never mind, you, you, you can... Uh, message me later. Now here, I'm going to give you what happened to my wait, uh, one minute. Uh, my battery is dying. Okay, I should be able. I should be actually already. Wait, what happened? Uh? Okay, so now here, ini bukan ramalan. Uh, so don't uh, get me wrong. It is not a ramalan. So he, these are the topics which I feel that is very important that you should not skip. Okay? These are the topics that you should not skip. Why? Because from the trend, from the trend that I've seen, many of these are able to peluang, untuk peluang sangat tinggi. So it's not Ramalan. I'm not saying that topic was come out from here. But what I mean is if you don't have time to read everything, you should not skip this. So please go and read through. Okay. I don't know why it's not charging. So I hope it will not die. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Solve the problem. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So bukan ramalan. Ah. Ingat. Ah. Chapter from 4, chapter 2, 3, uh, 6, 9, 10, 12, 13, 15. Now, doesn't matter. doesn't mean that other chapters will not come out. I don't have a crystal ball. Okay. I do not know what question coming out. But I feel that if you do not have the time to go through everything, please, out of the 28 topics, 28 chapters, I have chosen 16 for you. This 16, kalau betul-betul tak ada masa, you baca lah this 16 topics. Okay? Okay. So, Lily, you say, so we just insert human genes into cow DNA. Yeah, basically, if you want the cow to produce whatever that the, the what, what is the ability you want the cow to do? It is to produce the milk that doesn't have lacto, but uh, lacto, Okay, so you that way is the ability to produce milk that's no lactoglobulin. Maybe human, human milk doesn't have lactoglobulin. So you take that and put inside. Okay, form 5. Form uh, chapter 2 for photosynthesis. Okay, for chapter 4, vascular tissues, sexual reproduction, uh, plants. Adaptation, don't forget adaptation is a very popular question. Huh? Remember the form and function. Form, uh, what, is the, what is the structure and how does it help? So F and E answering by f plus e okay and what about the one in green ah blue 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 oh my last four chapter kenapa saya letak dalam bentuk ini why why special ah these are very special chapters because these chapters the majority at least one of them will find its way in the essay and you know how important your essays are right 20 marks just for one essay so please, never, never skip your last four chapters. Okay, if you don't have time, please just concentrate on these 16 chapters. I'm not saying other chapters will not come out. You will see that I don't have respiration there. You will see that I don't have the immunity there. Doesn't mean that it will not come out. I don't have a crystal ball. But I'm telling you that these are super important. Okay, all right. So I will uh, see you another time. Okay, of course. The form fast will be over, all right? I don't know where I will see you, but I will keep on uh, you know, having my channels. And if you need any more videos, please look at the technique and job that I've had uh, in my channel. I also have other answering techniques. If you find that topic, you need to discuss or to go through. All right, okay. So let me see if I have any questions that I have not answered. Uh. If cat milk part, if call what? Oh, that one is, I think... Um, I'm not sure about that. The cat milk, <laughs> that one susu, kilang susu for the gum, uh, for the for the what they call the cat. Uh, not sure. I think the breast like I'm not sure. Okay, we just insert it. Yeah. Okay. No questions here. So, all right. All the best, students. All right. Don't panic. 
you actually you know a lot more than you actually feel or you you, you feel uh scared right because you very jittery tapi just to come actually if you are too panicky what you've learned you may not come out okay so all the best to you and please uh you can go back and watch the video again if any part you need to copy down please just pause it and copy down the answer okay i'll see you another time and my channel will still be on okay so i will help your juniors then Okay, bye bye everyone. Thank you, thank you everyone. Asuka, Leong, Stephanie. Sekarang baru nampak nama lah, Shamini. Okay, sebab I think you don't want me to ask a question, right? Okay, okay, bye bye everyone. See you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. See ya.